when thinking about religion in horror movies, paranormal movies like The Exorcist, The Omen, none may come to mind. Or maybe movies about religious cults like The Wicker Man or Midsommar. Welcome to another episode of the Popcorn Confessionals 31 Days of Halloween. And this is Dave from Nerdbox, and I am accompanied by my wife, Jen, also from Nerdbox. And the movie that we're talking about may be lost in the mix of religious films. And it's a little gem directed by Bill Paxton, and that is Frailty. So fire up that Jiffy Pop and meet us in the booth. <laughs> Fenton Meeks arrives at an FBI office to tell the tale of the God's Hands serial killer and his involvement in the murders over the past 20 years. He reveals to Agent Doyle that the murders first began after his father had been visited by an angel who told him that his purpose was to kill demons that were hiding on Earth in the disguise of normal people. His father would not only share that message with his boys, Fenton and Adam, he would also begin to train them to serve as archangels of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, pretty heavy movie. Again, another one of those movies that are in our picks for this month that could happen in real life. Now, if you have not watched this film, there's one thing that you need to do. Do not look anything up about this movie. And don't look at the... Uh, the IMDb page. No. And when the movie, if it's like up on the screen in the beginning, don't look at the characters. Uh -huh. Yeah, so ignore anything about this movie until you see it mm -hmm. because there's a twist in the film. Yeah. And if you do the research, you're going to watch the movie and you're going to put two and two together yes. and you're going to be like, what? And then yeah. there, there yeah. goes the whole thing of the movie. Now, the good thing about this is Bill Paxton wrote and directed this film to be a fluid movie. That means the first time you go through, you're going to experience one thing. And then after you find out all the puzzle pieces, the next time you're going to go through, you're going to find out other things. So mm -hmm. the movie's going to have rewatch value to yes. it, where you go through and you're going to see different things each time you go through it, mm -hmm. which is great. He also stars in it. Yes, as Dad Meeks. He's Dad Meeks. He doesn't get a name. So what you think of this one? I love this movie. I also find this one very disturbing. Because I do think where it's like the whole like religious thing and it's the, the God's Hands serial killer. I'm not a religious person. So I believe that it was mental illness. That is my belief. I think that he really thought he was like, you know an archangel of God because he was a, a heavily religious man. And, but I think that he was suffering from mental illness, possibly, you know, something with like PTSD brought it on. But I think that he was suffering from mental illness. And he thought that this, you know, this angel was like talking to him and telling him to do God's work. And I believe that that happens with a lot of these people that think they're doing God's work. I think that it's mental illness. Could be, could be ego. Could be. Could be a serial killer. That's true. He could just be a serial killer. Mm -hmm. I don't think that. I really think it was mental illness Look, with him, but... If, if you're a serial killer, right, and you're close to your family, minus the BTK killer... Well, yeah, I mean, I guess the best way is to get your family involved. Yeah, right? <laughs> if you're going to have hobbies, why not go out and kill people together? You can have you can have your kids as lookouts. I assure you, we are not serial killers. <laughs> right? You can have your kids planted as lookouts, right? And you can yeah. show them mm -hmm. the right way to dispose yeah. of a body. Yeah. It's a family bonding activity. That's what this movie's about. It's family bonding. Sure. So I can't say this is like a slow burn film because, you know, you get introduced to the characters and then the story picks up, you know, he has the vision. And, yeah, it happens pretty quick. Yeah, and he's going to get signs, and those signs are going to lead him to what his purpose is going to be doing. And I have to say, you know, maybe he was seeing it because the, his interactions with his one son and, you know, the one son maybe believed it as well. So there's a, so that happens too. So you don't know. It Like I said, it's a fluid film, so you can go through this every time and see something different, but 
depending on what your experiences are in life, the food, the film is going to be a little bit different for you. Mm-hmm. So it's going to have many different meanings, which is pretty cool about films like this. Well, and that's why I said, because I have had experience with mental illness in my family and I'm not a religious person. So that's the way I see it. Mm-hmm. I see it as a mentally ill person who thinks he's talking to God or an angel or mm-hmm. some such thing. I can just be drunk. He did drink a lot. So, well, interesting fact about that. There's a can of beer by Ham's Beer that was uh, out in 1979. They can only find one can of it. So it's the same can of beer used throughout the entire film. Now, Frailty does have a twist at the end. The acting is superb. Yes. And this is probably one of Matthew McConaughey's earlier films where people started taking him serious. And he's a great actor, and he was good in this, but Bill Paxton blew him away. Well, yeah, I mean, but I think Bill Paxton was already kind of a seasoned actor by this point. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, his, you know, his his resume is very long, and, and he's a real, you know, he was a really good actor. Yeah, he's the, he has the, the hat trick and nerd type films. Mm-hmm. Predator, Aliens, and Terminator. Mm-hmm. So he was in all of those films. And he's in probably my first or second favorite vampire movie, Near Dark. Fuck Lost Boys. It's good, but it's not on the same level as Near Dark. Near Dark is a lot better than that movie because it's darker and more serious than The Lost Boys. And there's less 80s music and guys dancing around with no shirts on. <laughs> with a saxophone. And I was super excited to find out that Matthew McConaughey was in this because before I saw this, I had seen him in many other films and i honestly think that he he is a really good actor yeah he he can pull off any role i -hmm. think i mean i've seen him in pretty much anything in me serious horror you know uh, comedy romance like he's he's been in everything yeah now the kids in this film that play the younger version of matthew mcconaughey's character and his brother's character they were very good too Yes. And the tension between the brothers and the dad, very believable. And you could actually mm-hmm. kind of feel that off the screen. That's yeah. how well it was done. So bravo to those kids as well. Yeah. And I think the youngest kid, he really knocks it out of the park with his acting, mm-hmm. the, the younger brother. He really, he knocks it out of the park. He was really good. Yeah. Now, again, fluid movie. The reason why I say that, because there's going to be scenes that you're going to watch. And it's like, wait a minute. How are they getting away with this? And, you know, Bill Paxton's character kind of explains it as a veil of invisibility. So that's why, like, it's a fluid movie because you're going to look at it and say, oh, well, maybe this is Mm -hmm. a religious calling that he is following. So it's really good that way as well. Now, there are some things that fans have always questioned when they've seen this movie, and that is, one, the axe, which is one of the stars in the film. And it's kind of inspired by The Shining. But there is an inscription on it, and it's Otis. Now, when I hear Otis today, I think of House of Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects. This came out before that, so nothing to do with that. It's not the dad's name, as some people debate that it is. But the name itself was purchased by Bill Paxton because he came across a homeless gentleman and he's like hey let me take care of me here's some money and blah 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 and the homeless man's like nope don't want nothing to do with that so he purchased the rights to use the name otis from the guy so that he can give him some money Mm -hmm. and then the otis name is inscripted on the x which i thought was pretty cool so he got uh he got some money from the film because of what bill paxton did which i got that's that's really awesome i wonder if he gets residuals that'd be a cool way to get residuals from that movie as we've been saying no rating on this film from us because we want the rating from you where does it rate amongst the horror films that you're watched or watching where is it rate against other religious movies do you even lump it in there or does it stand out on its own and also let us know in the comments what you rate this and what are you watching this month and any recommendations that you may have for us. We haven't seen all the horror movies out there in the world. There's a bunch that are out there we still are, are catching up on. So let us know some of your recommendations. And maybe even give us some of your reviews on those films. Yeah, so we don't have to do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> they be doing typing. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
that sucks. <laughs> so like, subscribe, turn on the notification, and share. And until tomorrow, see ya. See ya.